What's up guys? This episode I wanted to introduce you to DigitalOcean Spaces. This is DigitalOcean's Amazon S3 competitor. So if you ever want to upload images to your application and you happen to already be using DigitalOcean, this is a really, really awesome uh, competitor to Amazon S3. So most of the time if you're uploading files in your Rails app, you're going to need some sort of storage that's outside of your server. And so you could use Amazon S3 as the default or now you can choose DigitalOcean Spaces. I have no affiliation with them, I just host my Rails apps on DigitalOcean. This is a feature I'm definitely gonna be using, so I wanted to document that as I go set it up. So it's really easy to set up. You'll log into your account, you'll create a space, and as you give it a name, it will create a URL. Um, I've already got one set up, so I'm not gonna go create a new one, but you choose your region. Right now it's only in their NYC3 region. Um, and then you can manage access to it and say all of the files by default should either be private or public. In most cases, when you're building a Rails app um, and people are uploading avatars and pictures and things like that, it'll be public files, so it makes sense to do public here. Um, but keep that in mind, you have the option to do whichever you like, and you have the uh, file by file permissions uh, level so you can actually specify if everything by default was private you could say this should be public that should be public and just do it on a one-off basis um, so i'm going to use public and then pricing is free right now until november 19th and this should start to roll out and it will only cost you five bucks for the equivalent um, on S3, it's like $94 a month, which is awesome. So they're definitely trying to be competitive here, um, but I believe they charge you a minimum of $5 every month. Whereas Amazon, you might be charged three cents if you're not really using it that much. So with your spaces configured um, and created, you will go over to the API section and towards the bottom here, there's a spaces access key section. So you wanna make sure that you have a key and you grab the key name, uh, this value here, and it will give you a secret as well, which I won't show you, but you will take those two and you will put them inside of your secrets.yaml file, um, and I'll show you that in a minute. I'm gonna load those from the environment, but you can drop them in to your secrets.yaml directly or put them in your environment, whichever is easier to do development with and test this out. Now also keep in mind you will want to remember and use your space's name inside your secrets.yaml as well. So ours was called GoRails, all lowercase. And we want to put that in as the bucket name um, for the AWS SDK. So let's dive into our application and configure Shrine to do uploads to DigitalOcean Spaces. So our application here has nothing in it right now. I've just got bootstrap and navigation set up and that's it. So we're gonna go to the bottom of our gem file and we will add shrine in here. And we'll also add the AWS SDK for S3. And that is what we're going to use to configure shrine to talk to spaces because spaces and S3 are pretty much API compatible. Now spaces doesn't have near the level of granularity and detail yet that Amazon S3 does, but in the future you'll be able to go and configure cores and do all the same stuff that you would want to do um, from AWS S3. So with that said, we are going to install these two gems and that is going to give us access to um, our shrine configuration, which we'll then configure to use the key, the secret, and the bucket name or the space name that we created. And so from here, we will go and say, um, let's generate a scaffold called photo, and we're gonna give it a column called image data um, as text, and this is going to be the model that we will mount shrine to. So let's create that with shrine real fast. We're going to create the uh, class and app models called image uploader.rb. This will be image uploader and it will just simply inherit from shrine, whatever configurations it has globally. And then you could configure like your different cropping sizes for images. And then in your photos model, um, the only thing that you'll have to do here, photo.rb, is include image uploader, and you'll pass in the image 
uh, there as the attribute name that you want to mount it to. And then we'll go to our form for photos form. We'll change this from a text area to a file field. So we can select the image. We're going to change the name of this to reference image on both of those. And then we'll go to the photos scaffold, the controller there that we scaffolded. And instead of permitting image data, we're going to permit the virtual attribute of image, which is the shrine file name uh, or attribute name. So that will configure everything from shrine on the model side. But now we need to go into uh, uh, config initializer shrine.rb to configure the global shrine configuration. We're going to require shrine storages S3. That's going to allow us to access the S3 code so we can set that up. We're going to say shrine.plugin active record because we want to make sure that this um, knows about active record and can save to the database and save everything. Then we want to say shrine.storages equals a new hash. We're going to have one for the cache. And that will be some options here. We'll figure that out in a second. And we'll also have the store, which will be the permanent store. Um, and we'll configure both of those to use some S3 options that we set here, which will define how um, the AWS SDK gem gets those options and can talk back and forth to S3 or um, DigitalOcean Spaces. So our S3 options are going to be an access key ID. We'll have something for that. Then we'll have the secret access key. And we'll have the bucket, which will be another value we need to pass in. The endpoint, which normally you don't pass the string in, but we will because we don't want it to point to Amazon. Uh, we want to point it to DigitalOcean. And last but not least, our region, um, which you could also configure using um, secrets instead, but we're going to hard code this right here. So normally what we want to do for this is say, let's grab this from rails.application.secrets and just give it like a DigitalOcean access key, or let's call it spaces key. Um, and then we'll just load all of our configuration stuff from the secrets. So this is going to be our bucket name. We could also put in the endpoint and region. I'm just gonna drop these in. So this will be NYC3, and that should be at HTTPS at digitaloceanspaces.com. And that's gonna give us the correct endpoint. And as long as our secrets.yaml file has, for each one of these environments, um, the digital ocean, digital ocean, spaces key we'll have a value for that the secret and the bucket so uh, for example if you may have your development in a different region or something like that in the future you might want to put these values into your configuration as well so they're dynamic um, but we'll have our bucket here and our secret here now the key and the secret are the ones that came from the API section. So you want to drop those in here or in your environment. And what I'm going to do is put them in my environment. So I'll have digital ocean spaces key. And I'll do the same for each one of these. Um, and this last one, the bucket is whatever you named your uh, digital ocean space. Um, and I'm going to put that in the environment as well. Um, but it could simply be that string of go rails or whatever you named yours that will be all it is um, So we're going to use the bucket kind of uh, naming scheme here because that's what it's going to be for the AWS gem um, But this is kind of not the same terminology uh, as s3 would have so once you get these configured in your environment or in your secrets.yaml, go ahead and close that up. And then we can begin to set up our shrine storages for S3. So we have shrine storage S3.new and we'll pass in some parameters for that. And we'll do the same thing for our store so that in both of these cases, um, we will be storing on that third party service and never on the local file system. 
So this takes uh, several options. First is the prefix. We want it just to be cache. That way it matches the storage name and that will define a folder inside of your DigitalOcean space or S3 with the matching name and you'll know that all the files in there are cache files or store files. Um, then we have, I'm gonna paste this in, upload options. These are other options you can pass into the S3 gem. Um, and then at the very end we wanna say S3 options with double asterisks to put those as parameters into the S3 config. So we'll do the same thing here with the stores, the prefix, and we'll grab all these S3 options in and do the same thing here. So what we're doing by default is we're setting those file upload options or parameters to upload um, as publicly readable files when we upload each one of them. And last but not least, I noticed I made a typo here. It should be shrine storage S3, and that will get us everything we need to get going and try this out and do file uploading. So let's run our Rails migration since we created that scaffold, and then we'll run a Rails server and get all of that up and running in our browser. And then hopefully if, and then once your application is and here you can see our scaffolds for the photos. We can choose a file, we can grab a photo of St. Louis, create that photo, and this will go and post it up to DigitalOcean Spaces. Now, I had some trouble while I was setting this up. Um, you know, I deleted my space and then recreated it, and so there are some bugs that you might run into, so keep that in mind. This is not officially out yet, but I wanted to walk you through this process, and here you can see the image data information that we get back from Shrine, which we need to convert to an actual image tag. So if we go to photoshow.html, .erb, um, we can then go and add, say, an image tag here. And instead of image data, we want image URL. And we can try that and see if that works. But what I noticed was when I do that, I just get this uh, alternative text, uh, which is the file name. So that isn't exactly what we want. And what I noticed is what we have to do is we have to say public is true on this image. And if we do that, this time we get the image to embed and that will work. So I don't know if that's exactly one of the quirks of DigitalOcean Spaces or not, but that is something I had to do to get the images to work. Now, as far as I can tell, there are no configuration options for core support yet, so I don't believe you'll be able to do uh, direct uploads to DigitalOcean Spaces just yet, but this is the very first iteration of their product, and there's a lot more coming, so I expect that to be supported in the near future. So right now, if you just need some really good bulk storage um, for really, really cheap and good bandwidth, um, then DigitalOcean Spaces is a perfect choice. So that's it for this episode. DigitalOcean Spaces may not be perfect yet, but it is on its way there, and I really, really like the price point that it offers, plus the awesome configuration options here that literally use the Amazon S3 gem in order to talk to DigitalOcean instead. That is pretty awesome because it means that anyone who is looking for maybe a cheaper bill would be able to just change some configuration options and copy over all of their S3 files to DigitalOcean and then um, have a cheaper bill. And that would be very little work from a developer perspective in comparison to writing a whole new uh, gem or library to go connect to another service in its own special way. So I thought that was a good business move and something that you can probably consider when you were building out your own APIs and figuring out a way to standardize that so that maybe you can easily get customers from other businesses by making your code uh, very, very similar to an implementation of a competitor's or something like that. So keep that in mind as you're building things, but that is all for this episode, and I will talk to you next week. Peace.